I remember growing up in Argentina in the early 90s. My mother, who is a doctor, she was preparing a lecture on this virus, HIV. I was running all around the table, trying to know everything about this virus. My mother looked at me and she told me, you know, Andres, it's a terrible virus. It actually attacks our own immune system. You know the immune system, what is protecting us, from all kinds of pathogens. And on top of that, she told me, this virus is very, very smart. It, it is actually extremely good at hiding from the immune system. So I told my mom, Mom, we should expose the virus to the immune system, and that's it. Well, she looked at me, and she told me, you know, Andres, it is perhaps a little bit more complicated than that. Let me tell you what I'm doing at Université de Montréal at the Schumann Research Center in my laboratory. And it's exactly that, trying to expose the virus to the immune system. But not only the virus, also the infected cell. We see the infected cell as a factory, producing thousands and thousands of new infectious viral particles all the time. So if we could target the infected cells, we may have an impact. So before going to this idea that we have in the lab, let me tell you some background about HIV Biology 101. The virus comes and is looking for a cell to infect, but it doesn't infect every kind of cell. It actually, it actually looks for a specific receptor. In the case of HIV, the receptor is called CD4. So the virus will come, will interact with CD4, and upon interaction, this is going to allow the virus to enter the cell and infect the cell. And one thing that the scientific community knows for a long time is that one of the first things the virus does is to take out CD4 from the cell surface. And we know that this is a way of the virus to talk to additional virus and say, whoa, this cell is mine. Go and look for your own. Why this is important for the virus? Because if the virus keeps plenty of CD4 at the surface of the infected cells, the cell could be infected by multiple viruses. This will lead to what we call superinfection. And in superinfection, the cell dies before it's actually able to produce and release more infectious viral particles. And if there is something a virus wants to do, it's to multiplicate itself. But in the lab, we were trying to understand, is this the only reason why the virus wants so badly to take CD4 from the cell surface? Could be another reason? Could it be? that this will allow the virus to express its envelope glycoproteins at the surface of the cell. I hope you're asking yourself, what, is, what are these envelope glycoproteins? I put them here in red, and it's what allows the virus to go and infect new target cells. And we believe that having the, this envelope compact, as shown here in red, very close, will allow the virus to be very, very infectious. But we were wondering in the lab, so I told you, the virus is very good at regulating CD4. What happens if we block the ability of the virus to downregulate CD4? Could it be that at the surface of the infected cell, now this envelope will interact and it will open up? Why we are so interested about that? The main reason is that we know that in infected individuals, there are plenty of antibodies that are actually targeting this envelope. You may ask, what are antibodies? I, prepare, I presented them here, like the letter Y, and they are kind of the bullets the immune system uses to fight pathogens. However, in the big majority of infected individuals, these antibodies do not recognize the envelope when it is closed, shown here in red. Could it be that if we open up the envelope, then these antibodies will be able to interact? Why this is important? Because when we have a, you have an infected cell, coated, bound by several antibodies, these antibodies could recruit what we call effector cells, such as NK. Do you know what NK, NK stands for? Natural killer cells. 
and you certainly don't want to mess with these cells. Certainly, the virus doesn't want to do that. Because when the cells are recruited by the antibodies, they get activated, and they will release toxic products that will end up killing the cell. So in the lab, we tested this experiment. We put cells, we infected them with a virus that could then regulate CD4. Therefore, the envelope was all closed, all red, as I'm showing, showing you here. We put the antibodies from infected individuals, and we put the NK cells. Nothing happened. However, when we abrogated the capacity of the virus to then regulate CD4, we observed that actually the envelope was open and it was exposed to some regions that were now recognized by these, the same antibodies. And they were able to recognize and recruit effector cells, cells such as NK cells, and this helped kill the cells. I told you not to mess with NK cells. So, I think that it is clear now that what we would like to go is to have this open, red, and closed envelope, and we would like to open it. The question that we have is how? I'm visual, so when I see the envelope, I see it as a hermetic seal can. What do you do at midnight in the dark kitchen when you want to open a can? You go for a can opener. So could we use a can opener and try to open up the envelope? It's pretty much as simple as it gets. The question is, which can opener we can use? We certainly know that CD4 will be a great can opener. And we have shown that it actually opens the envelope. Unfortunately, for several reasons, it is not practical, and we cannot use CD4. But could we use CD4 as a model? Model, model a molecular can opener based on CD4. And very luckily for us, very smart scientists did just that. They developed what they are called small molecule CD4 mimics, and they were very kind to send this molecule to us. So we could now test in the lab, OK, can we open this hermetic seal can, can we open it up and expose regions of the envelope that will be now recognized by the antibodies that are present in infected individuals? So we did that. We put an infected cell with a virus that was able to then regulate CD4. The envelope was closed. We had the antibodies, the vector cells, nothing happened. But in the same mix, we had this molecular can opener that looks a little bit like CD4, but it's way, way smaller. And we observed that actually we could open up the envelope. The envelope was bound by these antibodies, and these antibodies were able to recruit effector cells and kill them. It's easier to say than to do, but we end up killing them. <laughs> So it took me exactly eight minutes to tell you this story. It took actually more than four years of work in the lab to get here. But at least we have a path forward going from here. Of course, we did this in plastic tubes in the lab, in vitro, ex vivo experiment. We would like to test that and bring that to animal testing, animal models to see if it works. And if it does, perhaps in a few years, we may be able to test that into humans in clinical trials. And if all of that works. Then I will pick up the phone, I will call my mom, and I will tell her, you know, mom, perhaps it wasn't that complicated after all. <laughs> Thank you.